you're about to watch cliff get challenged by a really tough question i believe by a muslim you want to watch this from the beginning to the end because apparently it gets juicy and interesting let's go ahead and check it i have a question yes ma'am you said the first thing about taking a book as a proof for your belief you said no internal contradictions how well do you know this book? I got this from your friend the other day. It's the Bible for all of you who don't know. I don't know which version it is. I don't know who's writing, who decided what to put it in here. John, <laughs> we'll read John 1, 17, 18, oh, 18. Do you know this one? I'll read what it says here. It says, no one has ever seen God, but God is the one and only who is at the Father's side has made him known. Right here, it says, no one has ever seen God, okay? Mm -hmm. You believe that, you take that, you wanna read it? That's your book. This is what you take. Very patronizing. Right here. Same chapter, John 5, 19. Right. Jesus, it says here, Jesus gave them this answer. I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. No one sees. He only does what he sees. Internal contradiction. Inter so then this book has internal contradictions. Can we agree on that? Oh, you don't say yes or no answers. What do you say about this internal contradiction? When you, one of the basic principles of interpreting any book is you have to read in context. context. And obviously when you read John chapter one, the main point is Jesus is God in human form. He begins but in then, the beginning. But then Ma'am, am I allowed I, to answer you or not? But you're not making sense. You say the same oh, well, then, thing. Then why Wait. <laughs> why ask the question when someone begins to answer? You cut them off straight away. But, but, but. <laughs> I've never seen Cliff this. He's like, hey, I'm allowed to answer you a lot. All right, let's go. Wasting your time Over standing again. here talking to because me if I'm not making sense. Because look at all these people yeah, here who have questions. There's Fine, too then why don't you let me go on to other people? Miss... If, if I don't make sense, ma'am, why, why do you waste you? your time? Why am I going to let you misguide them with your misguidance? Oh, I'd I see. Sit here and so you have to sort of be a parasite it. who comes in here and just feeds off the people who are listening to me talk? Absolutely, why not? You already made a fool of yourself here anyways. That's pretty sad. Why can't you just be open and honest and have an honest dialogue? Go explain this. Yep, go go ahead. Ahead. Okay. Explain this. <laughs> Goodness me, embarrassing. Okay. John chapter 1. John begins with the words, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word, the word was, was with, with God. God. And the, the word, word was God. Was God. Crystal clearly, John 1.1 1, 1 is stating the deity of Christ. The Word there is Christ. The Greek word is logos. Obviously, by reading John 1, you know he's talking about Christ. Obviously, he's hearkening right back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, which says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John is taking that and putting it in Greek. John 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, was God. God. Nobody has seen God. I haven't seen God. You haven't seen God. But the claim of John is, and the claim of Jesus is, that he is God, revealing himself, in, in human form. That's clearly, unmistakably, what John 1 is teaching. And you don't have to have a PhD in New Testament. Just read it yourself but and you'll figure that John. out. It's both John. I didn't flip to even a different chapter. It's two pages away. Both John saying, one saying, no one sees God. The other one saying, Jesus sees God. Is it saying Jesus sees himself? Is this something that everyone who yes, reads the Bible Yes, that's exactly right. That Jesus is claiming to, to be God. Revealing himself in human form. That's his and claim. And he sees I'm himself. God. No, you're Why not God. Why would John write that? Well, you're not what? God. Yeah. What's the difference? Well, if you die and rise from the dead, I will listen very closely to Why everything you have to say. Why, Why is that the one that thing that, that. that you take? Why did don't you see you George Washington inaugurated first president of the United States? Other people did. I trust that. Good. And other people saw Christ die on a cross and they saw him risen from the dead. But they have <laughs> internal contradictions. No, there's no contradiction there. We human beings do not see God. But when God chose to become a human being in Jesus Christ, obviously Jesus knew the Father very, very intimately, very, very well. I was raised uh, uh, a Catholic, and I think Jesus was a fantastic, fantastic man that everybody should learn about his life. How did you find out about Jesus? I was taught. By whom? By, through going to church and, and, and my, my family. So why did you trust a, a priest in a Catholic church? Wait, where did the Muslim girl go? It seems like she just vanished. Did she run? And your family to tell you the accurate truth about Jesus. Really? Because uh, religion perpetuates brainwashing. That's the only way to say it. When you take a child and you teach them from day one that they have to go to church once a week and you, you it's just like learning a language. That's, if you ask me to speak Chinese right now, I'm not going to be able to do it. But if I grew up in China, it would be second nature to me. Religion, think about baptism, okay? What is baptism? Why is it so important? Why was the idea that baptism is everything so perpetuated? 
What you're, you know what baptism is? You are making the choice for a child that can't even make up its mind yet. That's in Catholic See? stuff, You've yeah. already indoctrinated them into a belief system. Without where them where does Jesus talk about infant baptism? He doesn't know. Where does Paul or Peter or James talk about infant baptism? He doesn't know. Where does anywhere in the Bible is infant baptism talked about? Nowhere. So I agree with you. You see, sir, we agree. Infant baptism is found nowhere in the Bible. Okay. So my question remains on the table. Don't say okay. Don't you just hate it when people bring up something. They have zero context. They don't know what they're talking about. And then when you pin them on it, they're like, well, well what's your point? <laughs> my point is, why are you bringing up things you can't even back? You, don't, you have no idea. No idea. Well, I've read the Bible and the Bible... When they're saying they've read the Bible, they've read like maybe not even if not even a paragraph, like one verse. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, this says this. Oh, I'm gonna get him. I can't wait to talk to a Christian. Did you read the whole page? Well, why why do I have to? It's like, okay, don't you think it's crucial to read the entire book before judging? Or you're just gonna go off of one thing and then take it out of context and then fit it wherever you please? That's not the way the world works. Sir. What is your source of information about Jesus? Uh, Why did you trust that source? Be it the Catholic priest, be it your mom and dad? Okay, fine. You, th th yes. Why because, did we say Because Muhammad? I was raised since this big to, to know and, and taught. That's, that's why you trusted. Okay. I had to be a skeptic. I was not going to trust mom and dad and the Question. local priest or minister to tell yep. me the truth about Jesus. Yep. Question. I have to go to the eyewitness testimony. Okay. Which have been that's, a whole, that's right, sir. I am that's not whole, whole going to build debate. my life on what mom and dad tell me. That's a whole other debate because the Bible you have been to think about things through yourself. All right. Well, you just mentioned to me that, that the Bible has been rewritten many times, and pieces of it are have been excluded and are still being found right now. We, we, so what you're saying is that your first-hand source that you're talking about has been used. King James rewrote the Bible for a reason. Okay. And, and before our political systems were able to control the masses, religion controlled the masses. Religion was was government. All right. King James in the early 1600s did not translate the Hebrew Old Testament or the Greek New Testament. He didn't know the languages. I'm not saying he did it himself. He was he the king. Hired he hired. He told someone Hebrew to do Hebrew scholars it. and Greek <laughs> scholars. Right. Okay. They did not change anything. How do you know? Because I've studied the Hebrew Old Testament and the Greek New Testament. Do you know Hebrew and Greek? I had to learn Hebrew and Greek in seminary. The way that they taught, and the I way know that they spoke it at the time. That the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the New Testament was written in Greek. Now, you raise a great question, which is, why should we trust Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to give us accurate historical information? Hopefully, you have some tests, sir, that you use to determine historical reliability. Myself, I've got four tests. I use them on Suetonius. Herodotus, U.S. history, Greek history, any history. Nothing sacred about my test, come up with your own. My four tests are internal consistency, meaning by that are there contradictions within the text that point to massive confusion. When you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll notice a tremendous internal consistency. No contradictions. Different perspectives, yes. Second test, literary style. Once upon a time in the land of Nod, wink and blink and Nod took a boat ride. Obviously, that's fairy tale. It's not the literary style of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John use historical narrative, like a newspaper reportage, as literary style. Third test, archaeology. Are we talking about Jesus and the island of Atlantis? No. We're talking about archaeologically verifiable Bethlehem, Nazareth, Jerusalem, <coughs> Rome, Sea of Galilee. Fourth test. Come on, man. 2,000 years ago, in the first century, these guys write these gospels. Haven't you ever played telephone? You whisper a secret in the ear of the person next to you, they whisper it in the ear of the person next to them? Yes, uh -huh. I played that game. Yes, the secret's totally perverted. That is not how we have the Gospels handed down to us. Sir, the Gospels that we have today in English are based on over 5,200 Greek manuscripts all agreeing to an infinitesimal degree. That is crazy. Sir, there is no document from antiquity that could even approach the New Testament Gospels in manuscript evidence. So the overwhelming evidence is the Gospels are accurate historical. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. You said Goodness the me. Guys, I want you guys to let me know in the comment section what do you think in regards to what just took place here. I am always curious 
obviously respectfully right knowing or wondering what people what's in people's mind what did people pick up different perspectives and so forth but if you're rude about it uh yeah it's not gonna go down too well i i, I dislike rude people i absolutely hate i don't even want to say hate i just dislike it so let me know what you think some of the arguments some of the questions i think there was actually good genuine questions for me personally you need to seek god for yourself my friend there's no other way about it seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and the rest will be added on to you seek him for yourself not because of mom and dad not because of your siblings not because i don't know wherever you heard about god and now i'm just going to blindly believe but have some faith man the bible is saying faith having faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains so if you just open yourself meaning you you approach it from a context of you know i want to find out more i want to learn christ please open my eyes come to me and all of this stuff god will he will, he will reveal himself to you he'll show himself to you you feel his presence you know that oh wow okay he will give you discernment he'll give you wisdom so make sure you pray these things and uh, as i said that's it it's not rocket science just have faith oh ye of little faith have faith and trust me, things will begin to change in your life. Let me know in the comment section down below which video I should check out next. And you, my friends, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Like the video and all of that stuff, alright? Bye.